Hi you guys, good morning. It is starting to rain, so hopefully I can get this done before it starts really letting down. But my name is Faith and I am a gardener here in North Florida in Zone 8B. And recently I have been going through some life changes which have involved moving and setting up this new garden space. So today I wanted to take you around and show you how everything is looking. It's in various states of different projects and different things going on as I am setting it up. But the plants are already taking off and looking really, really beautiful. So I want to show you what's growing and what's doing well and what my plans are for this garden. I guess I should start off by saying, in case anyone is new here, that this is a space that I had to set up rather quickly. So it involved doing things maybe not the way that I had planned or that was ideal for what the type of growing that I like to do. I really recommend doing no-till and no-dig gardening, but in this space to get it set up, because I had to do it so quickly, we did have to mow and till the space several weeks apart, and then now I am trying to establish it as no-till going forward. So that is just kind of what happened and how I had to proceed just to get a space to grow vegetables and plants rather quickly. So because the space is so large, I didn't have enough cardboard or compost to cover this amount of space. So I am in the process of covering the aisles with cardboard so that I can put wood chips on top of that like Charles Dowding recommends. And then in the aisles, I am composting over that and as well, but I didn't put cardboard over that. So. Like I said though, this all happened rather quickly, so I am kind of just moving forward in the best way that I know how. So this is a shared garden space and my cousin's husband actually gardens over there on the other side. And then this is my side um, and my family's side. So I grew up gardening in this space with my dad um, and it's probably been about maybe 11 to 12 years since we have garden in this space and since it has been used. So it feels really good to have this space utilized as a garden again. So anyways, let's get started. And these first two rows are basically my herb and flower gardens. I also have, if you can look through the weeds, some garlic growing in the front right here and then i have already gone through and weeded this bed once but i'm going to need to do it again and place more compost down um, and then everything else in this bed is a mixture of flowers for the pollinators and herbs herbs for me so this is chamomile which is one of my favorite herbs to use for tea We've got some dill here, some bronze fennel. This is just a Hawaiian, orange Hawaiian marigold. Um, some nasturtiums and aloe. This is a blue boy bachelor button that has not bloomed yet. Then we have some zinnias, which is queen red lime and cactus redmond zinnia. Um, Super Redmond, I believe. It actually doesn't look as pretty here as some other ones that I'll show you because it's not quite as pretty in that one. Some anise hyssop. These will put off really beautiful purple flowering spikes. Have some milkweed. Some pink dandelions. Some more bachelor buttons. Some flowering sage, which I've actually never had sage flower before for me, so that's pretty cool. Some more bronze fennel, yarrow, echinacea, some bolting cilantro, nettle. I actually think I want to plant this pot so I can have a huge nettle patch, but maybe somewhere where I won't have to worry about getting <laughs> stung. Stinging nettle is actually extremely good for you. It's another one of my favorite herbs. It's good for your kidneys. You can use it and it has a lot more vitamins and minerals even than spinach and you can use it in the place of spinach. All you have to do is kind of boil it to get rid of the sting. Also drying it can get rid of the sting and then you can make it into a powder and make like nettle lattes out of it or add it to soups and smoothies. Lots of different ways that you can use nettle. I really, really love it. We have some Cosmos. I always have a really hard time growing Cosmos. I'm not quite sure why, except just that I do. So I'm really hoping that this one will do well because I love Cosmos. I can just never really seem to get them to do well. This is a straw flower, which I really love these when they bloom because the blooms will hold their shape even as they're dried. So they're really beautiful for wreaths and making wreaths. This is the toothache plant, 
which is really good. It kind of numbs your mouth if you have tooth problems. So that's really cool. Some borage. I love these little blue flowers and they'll turn pink as they get pollinated by the bees. So that's really fun. And they have like a cucumber dill taste. Some more zinnias. This one is Oklahoma salmon. I love that peach color. This is carmine, Oklahoma carmine. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Also really beautiful. Some more cilantro and anise hyssop and milkweed, bronze fennel. Like I said, I grow a lot of stuff specifically trying to attract pollinators and get pollinators into this new garden space. So milkweed for the monarchs, bronze fennel for the swallowtail butterflies, all the flowers for me because I love them and think they're beautiful, but also for the bees and butterflies to have some nectar to eat. So if you're ever trying to butterfly garden, it's always good to have host plants for the caterpillars and plants for the butterflies for uh, nectar and things like that. So, Lona, have you come to visit me? Hi, hi. All right, let's not get in the garden, come on. So this is another Redmond Super Cactus. And this is a better look at what it looks like. I love these kind of like, I love the cactus dahlias or cactus zinnias. I really think they're cool. There's another one, another straw flower, some sage. And kind of the same things. It's just a mixture of a lot of the same things. Now this back part of the row, I need to fill in a little bit more um, with some more herbs. Come on. Let's go down the aisles. So I have some chives back here and on this other side I have um, some onions in the front actually. Ooh, look at this one. How cool. And they're quite, they get quite big. And then these are all my dahlias, like have dinner plate dahlias and a um, bunch of like kind of big flowering varieties. So I'm really excited to see what these end up looking like. And all my onions. And then I wanna come through this back row and plant another row of flowers, but I'm not quite sure what. I just know that it will help keep kind of the weeds at bay because this is all just bare soil. I may do a whole row of calendula because I really love calendula. It has a lot of uses. Um, I may do more dahlias or zinnias. I haven't quite decided. If you have any suggestions of what you think I should put in this long row behind the dahlia and zinnia bed, I would love to know. So here's one of the first dahlias. I actually purchased this one as already a plant, but it looks like it's about to start flowering again. So that's really cool. Some more. Oh, and this has been my favorite flower. Look at this queen red lime zinnia. It just gets prettier and prettier every single day. Look at that. That is a gorgeous zinnia. I love that. I have not been able to bring myself to uh, pick it yet, even though it'll encourage all the rest of it to keep growing and blooming, but I just can't seem to take it out of the space. So moving on to the next row, we have this is a little blackberry plant. It's a dwarf blackberry. It's also a thornless, so it's got its first bloom. I'm pretty excited to see what these taste like. I want to say it was baby cakes, but I'm not quite sure. And then we have all of my melons. Now these are a little closely planted, and that's because I want to put trellises here, and there's melon on the other side, and have some of these go up the trellis, and this middle one to not go up the trellis. And then some watermelon. These were actually gifted to me by a friend of ours. And so they're quite small because they were just planted. And then I'm going to have another trellis here. And these are actually um, cucumbers. I believe these are mini and long cucumbers, if I remember correctly. So they're getting quite big. Some more watermelon. And then you can see I weeded this the other day and that section I have not gotten to yet. So you can kind of see the difference between what I've weeded and what I haven't. The weeds are pretty aggressive, which is 
why I need to add a lot more compost to this area and why I have been putting cardboard down the aisles and plan to put the wood chips on top. Also, I think it's interesting, so I haven't weeded this bed, but the compost has cut a lot more weeds back compared to this section. So I think it's a really neat experiment to kind of see how well the compost keeps things at bay compared to this part that has not been composted as of yet. I've had a lot of accidental experiments going on in this garden as I have been getting stuff ready and just because it takes so much time and because I've been in the process of moving some stuff is happening while others aren't and it's been cool to see how that affects the plants and how the compost or being fertilized or different things like that can really affect and change the plants. So again compost still has some weeds but then look at the end that hasn't been composted. It's just wow. Now this is my squash bed and even though I'm still trying to go for no-till, I am tilling these until I can get the compost put down. So this is all squash. So I have several different kinds of squash. I have some yellow crookneck, some patty pan, some zucchini. And I believe this is just the natural coloring of the leaves and isn't powdery mildew. At least I really, if I remember correctly, that is how this plant colors because no other plants are having that issue except the zucchini. So I think that's just its coloring. I also have some butternut squash and some kaboka squash. Let's see, this is another zucchini. I wanna say this was green machine, but I'm not entirely sure. So some of these are more trailing and I hope we'll see that one will kind of take over. I think squash flowers are really pretty too. So I've been trying to come out here and hand pollinate as much as I can. Um, just to make sure that things are getting pollinated. So right here we have a male and a female. So I can just take that. And then just kind of get that in there and hand pollinate to make sure that I get some squash. Now typically that's a job for the bees which is why I love supporting the pollinators so much because there are a lot of plants that you really need their help with. However, I haven't been seeing that many bees or pollinators yet so um, or even just other little flying things. I haven't seen as many as I would like yet so I'm really trying to make sure that I can get some squash and who is in my garden? Mona, what are you doing? Oh, no ma'am. No ma'am. Are you a mama's girl? Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. So this is a squash aisle. I'm thinking about succession showing, succession sowing some more squash um, on the sides possibly because it's a lot of bare ground and that of course isn't great for the weeds so I might do a little bit more squash just to make sure that things kind of the soil can stay covered. So over here and if you're losing oh there was just a little red bird on my trellis um, are some of my trellises and we all need to be weeded over here, but I've got some Chinese red noodle beans and some purple beans. I forget which kind I grew am growing, honestly, but they're starting to take off. And then over here, I am planning to put some pepper plants, but my pepper starts did not do well, so I'm gonna have to buy some. And then, I don't know if you can see them, but there's some little bush cucumbers over here and these are all potatoes so this trellis is supposed to be a cucumber trellis but nothing has popped up so I need to re-sew I also need to hang this up I took it down for a big storm the other day and then over here are my eggplants and they're really struggling because there's a lot of weeds and it hasn't been composted um, so I really need to work on getting a lot of these things weeded 
And then on this trellis, I have cucamelons, which are starting to take off and do well. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little tiny, it's not focusing, but there are some little tiny flowers starting. Can you see that? I mean, they are so tiny, it's like it can't even focus on it. And then over on this side, I have black eyed Susan vine. And these are still quite small. This actually, well, that's one plant, but I believe this is it. I'm not super sure because I've never grown it before, but need to get all this whole area weeded. And then I have some beets on the outside. So moving down, here is the aisle we just walked down just to make sure you're not losing track of where we are. Sometimes it can be hard when you're so close up. But I just planted these yesterday and moved them over from my other garden space and actually harvested a quite a bit of potatoes before replanting them in the ground. So these are all red Norland potatoes and blue Adirondack potatoes. So I'm ready to get these composted. And then these are all potatoes that have been here for a little bit that, um, my cousin's husband over there decided he didn't want to take the time to plant and so he gave them all to me which is really exciting so I'd be happy to share all of these potatoes with them but they are looking really really good and we're going to have a ton of potatoes to store for this winter and then in this row i have my bush beans which a lot of them didn't come up and do super well and then i have some tomatoes back here and what I think is really interesting is that I've weeded some of this but back there I haven't weeded yet but what I think is interesting is these tomatoes which let's take a look at these tomatoes on this aisle are huge they have very thick stems they're already flowering they look so healthy and then so do all of my lettuces and everything I planted over here. Now I got the compost on these beds pretty quick. I also fertilized them with down to earth fertilizer, um, vegetable fertilizer. And these plants have done amazing. They haven't had to fight with weeds for nutrients. They've gotten all the nutrients that they need through amendments and through compost. And they have just done so, so well. Which is interesting because these ones that I planted a day after are not doing so well at all. And they've had to fight with the weeds for nutrients and haven't been composted and haven't had the amendments that these ones over here have. So I think that's a really cool, and this is what I meant by unintentional garden experiment because look at this. These are just amazing. And I've gone through and taken off some stems today just because they needed to provide some airflow. So I've been babying these a little bit more because they are doing so well in comparison to, I mean, look at this, look how tiny this is. Just planted a day after and just really not doing as well. So over here with these tomatoes I, and with the ones up here, I've got some basil plants, some marigolds. These are really good companion plants for tomatoes. I've got some calendula and some violas. I love planting these next to the tomatoes and lettuces, which I've got a bunch of different romaines and stuff. A bunch of different types of romaines and lettuce. And I love planting these because the tomatoes kind of provide shade for them and these don't really do well in heat which we have an overabundance of here in florida in the summer so it really helps these to live a little bit longer and helps them to kind of drop their seed and take over and i love using these for teas or adding them on baked goods or in salads because um, these are edibles and these are johnny jump ups so i love planting them with my lettuce in front of the tomatoes I'm also really loving my lettuce varieties that I'm growing this season. I have been growing some other kinds which just weren't giving me the crunch, ooh, a little ladybug, or satisfaction that I really like in a salad, but these remains have been doing so well. They're super crunchy and really good. Um, 
planting I'm growing and some of them are like more mini kinds. I've got Trucus and Breen and I'm not sure. I'll have to provide, see if I can prov provide a little list either on the screen or down in the description below of what all the lettuces were because I can't remember off the top of my head, but I am loving them. So over here in between the trellises, I am doing some flowers and these these don't have a trellis yet because i am planning on doing the florida weave for these tomatoes and trying out a different style of tre trellising than i'm doing over here with just the stand up um, and the gauged welded wire um, but look at all these lettuces i actually really need to go around and harvest some lettuce but i always use the cut and come again method to extend my harvest and i just harvest the lower most outermost leaves and go around and harvest those from every single plant and so it allows the other leaves to keep growing and I just do that and keep doing that until they kind of bolt and reach the end of their life so that is how I harvest my lettuce I don't cut out any of these plants for example this looks like it'd be one of the most older leaves and outermost so I would harvest like that and I would harvest them from around the outside first to allow these to continue to keep growing but look at that see nice sturdy crunchy love it all of my basil some dark opal some purple opal some lemon basil some genovese basil large italian i've grown all sorts of different types of basils this one looks like the lemon basil down here and these Oh gosh, look at this. Like, these have been the biggest, most sturdiest tomato plants. Look how large this tomato flower is, if I can get it to focus. There we go. They have just are so big and so healthy. And the stems on the plants have just been so healthy because it was really windy when I planted them. And so they really had to learn to stabilize and have just grown really nice and healthy. So that's that so far. Now on this back row, and I need to pick up all these limbs that I trimmed off the tomatoes, but <clears throat> this is gonna be my sunflower and okra row. I need to go through and plant some more sunflowers and okra, um, but you can see they're starting to get big, even though I need to do some weeding here too. These are the little dwarf teddy sunflowers. And what else did I, I plant some autumn beauty and lemon queen sunflowers. Here's an okra. I love okra. They do really well here in the south where heat is in abundance. Um, so okra does really, really well here and is a southern staple. You might be my newest garden pest, huh? No, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? So there's a little break. And this garden space, it's not actually mine. This is actually uh, my boyfriend and my dad's little experiment. They are doing some beans of their own and have been tilling this section. I really think that they could have done these lines closer together, but like I said, I'm staying out of this one. Tons of tons of bush beans, which is really exciting because mine didn't do well. Corn all through here. And then you can't tell through the weeds out there, but there is, all the way down on the side of this is all going to be field corn um, because they are actually wanting to do some dove hunting which is not something that I am into but it will be cool to see this all filled with corn but this is all sweet corn that we will be eating and the other is just field corn. So one thing I have been noticing out here because um, of the corn, I have been noticing some crows. I never thought I might actually have to make a scarecrow, but I've been seeing a lot of crows. And I have been seeing some deer tracks as well, which makes me a little bit nervous um, because this garden space is not fenced in. And I've also seen some dog tracks. And all of that to say is that's just a part of it out here in the country and something that I'm just keeping in mind as I'm growing this new space because I certainly don't want it to get all eaten up by deer. I'll do just one last walk through down the aisles and let you look at everything. It's been really fun to take on this new garden space and new gardening methods after 
growing in raised beds for the last few years and getting kind of back to how I first learned how to garden and kind of relearning this and doing it differently and with new modern things that are more regenerative and better for the environment and trying to move towards that. But also not beating myself up for not being able to do that in areas where I can't or just you know part of the struggle it's all a learning process and you just do the best that you can and that is <laughs> what I keep telling myself and the pecan trees that are starting to bloom and grow leaves so pretty so thanks for hanging out with me today you guys and taking a tour of the garden and seeing how everything is looking so far i really hope you enjoyed it and i will continue to work on this space and keep hopefully making it better and better and these garden tours are so fun for me too because it's a great way for me to look back and see how much progress that i have made and all that i have learned and especially when it comes december and i'm planning for the next year so i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did and i will see you all soon bye you guys